In the world of housing, where are we? Because if you look at home builder sentiment and home builder stocks, it's bad. <laughs> well, we're in a place of change. I mean, if I could say anything about housing, it's in a need of a structural renovation. Um, we're going to look at interest rates that are a percentage point above where they were last year, and we're going to blame interest rates for falling demand. But I submit to you today, it's not all about rates. There are things going on in the housing market that have long-term implications, namely the price of land, which keeps mm. going up, and the tightness of supply right where millennials Millennials need it most for that starter home segment. Those things are not uh, interest rate driven, they're secular, they're longer term, and then there needs to be a policy action, not just a financial one. You know, there's a great story in Bloomberg Business Week this week that's about Frisco, Texas. It starts in Frisco, Texas, mm -hmm. the fastest growing city in America. It's just outside of Dallas. Toyota's North American headquarters is there, and they are having trouble selling these higher end homes. Mm -hmm. So there's an oversupply in some places. What's, what do we make of this sort of imbalance? How did we get here? There is an oversupply at the high end. You see that in every city from Frisco, te Texas to Manhattan. There's an oversupply of homes for wealthy people. And where we got there is from home builders who were risk averse. Remember what happened during the financial crisis. There was an overbuilding in the sand states, right? Nevada, uh, Florida, California. They were building for affordability single family homes. We see where that led them to, right? The worst housing crash that the, we've seen nationally. Now the, the trend was to build at the high end because that's where there was a sure bet. We're talking about betting and golf. This was a bet made by home builders that the, the demand would be there. Now now there's an oversupply at the high end just when millennials are coming into the market, just when we need lower supply. Most. All right, well, joining us now is someone who knows a thing or two about this subject. Cheryl Palmer is the chairman and CEO of Taylor Morrison, one of the nation's largest home builders. Cheryl, great to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so what do you make of all this? Well, what, are you seeing, you. Uh, what are you seeing there uh, on the ground and across the markets where you build? You know, like we talked about on our um, Q3 earnings call, we're seeing different conditions in each of our markets. You know, if I look at a, the most from you know a macro standpoint, we actually feel quite good about the strength of the economy. The consumers feeling really good. Consumer confidence is nearly at a 20-year high. I'm certain that has a lot to do with jobs and unemployment being near a 50-year low. Um, you know, we're seeing traction on incomes. And then you look at the demographic tailwinds with the millennials just entering home ownership ages. And those are things to feel really good about. Certainly, we've seen the customer take a step back, trying to digest what's happening. A lot of data points coming their way. And um, we have seen interest rates move about 100 basis points over the last year. And we've seen appreciation in, you know, across the U.S. So it's going to take a little time for the consumer to absorb all of that. So, Neela, I was struck with what you said that it's we're going to blame interest rates, but it's not that. But come it's inside not the just Bloomberg, not just come inside the Bloomberg here, and this sort of illustrates what we're talking about. So, the yellow line here, that's the 30-year mortgage rate. We know that's up. The blue line here is uh, the Case Shiller Home Price Index, so the affordability in some respects. But the purple line is wages year over year. Average hourly earnings year on year are up. So why can't we counter it with making more money? <laughs> money should solve everything. <laughs> Remember that this Doesn't wage growth. Throw money at it. <laughs> it's totally what I do. <laughs> no money is a problem. It solves most things. Uh, wage growth is a recent phenomenon. Remember all those years where there was no wage growth. Well, during those years, home prices were growing double digits in the places where jobs were being created. So this mismatch has been years in the making, and a couple of months of strong wage growth isn't going to solve it. So Cheryl, I've got to ask you about millennials. It's one of our favorite, favorite questions out there. How are they different uh, as home buyers? You know, the millennials aren't as different as I think we hear some of the rhetoric uh, around them. Um, I think the difference is they're buying a little later. But actually, if you were to graph home ownership ages over the last 30, 40 years, you would see that every couple of years the age of home ownership moves slightly up. And so the trend line actually isn't quite different. So what we're seeing from millennials, when we look within Taylor Morrison, um, we have, you know, about a quarter of our buyers are millennials. And interestingly enough, about half of them are buying their second home. So they're really, you know, enjoy home ownership. It's just about the right time, and usually marriage and children have a lot to do with that. 
So Cheryl, wh what do you think of the thesis that Neela was laying out, that yes, you have higher interest rates, uh, but you also have affordability issues uh, and the types of homes that are being bought are different than the ones that we have supply for. How does that scenario change how you structure your business, change how you look at the business? You know, certainly um, you have to look at this business as you, I'm certain you know, this is a very local business. And so market by market, we have to take a strong look at the supply and the demand characteristics. It's very hard to generalize across the U.S. There are markets where the supply is very constrained at the low end, and there are markets where it's very constrained at, I would say, that first, second time move up or luxury buyer. And so it's really about talking to the customer, understanding their wants and needs, and making making sure we weren't in a position to provide for that. So Neela, if there's one data point that you're most looking forward to seeing or you most need to see one way uh, or the other, what is it coming up? That the, health, that the consumer stays healthy. Mm. Um, that has driven the economy. That is the key source of economic growth, not just in, in the housing market, but in the stock market as well. As long as those conditions stay ripe and we see that wage growth, I think that Cheryl's absolutely right. The tailwind is with millennials and the housing market's future is healthy as well. Hey Cheryl, what interest rate freaks you out? You know, we do a lot of consumer research and we've most recently updated it within you know, the last 30 days. And what we're finding out is the consumer um, really isn't freaked out about the interest rate. There are, we actually saw the trend move up of people that were willing and still able to buy at higher interest rates. Now that changes a little bit by consumer group, but think about the millennials who are just enjoying home ownership for the first time. They don't really appreciate the impact of a four and a half to five percent interest rate. In fact, they're buying payments. So based on the research we've done, I don't think the market or the consumers really begin um, to change their views on home ownerships for another couple hundred basis points. And that's demonstrated when we look at our backlog and we look at our customers that actually have anywhere from three to 500 basis points of room mm. in their ability to qualify for the home they're buying. Or said another way, they could buy a bigger house. So I think we've still got some room ahead of us. Neela? I think counterintuitively, the rates are not just biting the buyer because they're higher, but also the trade-up buyer, right? Why get rid of your 3.5% mortgage if you don't have to? And that's why we're Three seeing... Three and a quarter. <laughs> there you Three go. <laughs> that's true. why we're seeing a strong renovation market. We saw that in Home Depot's earnings uh, this for the third quarter. A lot of people who are middle age are making the choice to stay put. That impacts supply at the low end. And Cheryl, you know, a couple of the macro sort of global economic issues seem to play in here, too, one of which is immigration. You know, you're joining us uh, from Arizona, the H-1B visa issue and, and other immigration issues. Does that start to filter through already or does it happen more in 2019 or not at all? Oh, it's been with us for quite some time, but I, I do think it's worth commenting on what I just heard, and absolutely right, we're looking at most of the U.S. today sitting with interest rates in the 3 to 4 percent. Um, so that, that is, you know, it's going to have an impact on mover rates and mobility. But as far as immigration, and um, this has been something we've been dealing with from a labor shortage, um, not just in 18, but really for the last few years, and as an industry, we um, are working at a number of solutions to really engage um, the new workforce into the benefits of construction.